Yo! Hello, everyone! Hello, hello! Good evening! Oh, hold on. This is gonna sound really weird. Hold on. Okay, I had to take off a little thing on my mic because I realize it sounds a lot better without it. A little, like, dust protector thing. Yes, we are back to the duck today. You all are not seeing my face because I all but rolled out of bed and rolled into my computer room. And that's basically how we've been operating these days. <laughs> but it's fine. I hope everyone's been having a wonderful day. It doesn't feel like a Monday. I mean, it does feel like a Monday, but like, not really. I don't know. Risa, thank you, thank you, and thank you, Raiders, earlier. Sorry, I missed you guys. I was busy, um, not on stream. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, we're going to see how much of this story we can knock out today. Also, we'll see how long we can go before my phone bursts into flames again like last time. Um, it seems that we are still consuming more battery than we are charging. So um, if we need to uh, pop back over to my other webcam, um, uh, YouTube model tracker, whatever, then we'll do that and it'll be quick. But either way, oh, hey, congrats on pulling Topaz. Hey, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the issue is with this. I should just probably charge my phone before I stream. That would be the easier answer, right? Well, that would be the answer for someone who, uh, has critical thinking skills. <laughs> uh, not me today. <laughs> anyway, just go ahead and drop all these in here, because your girl wants jades. Speaking of jades, I came across some jades, so we're gonna... Do some quick pulls for, um, what's it fuck? For a light cone. I'm not gonna even distribute those. TBH. Cool. Let me know how game audio is. I like it when you guys can actually hear game audio. I don't know about you guys, but I like when I can actually hear game audio. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and just pop a squat right here. It's a bit soft. All right, cool. Let me go ahead and crank it. Hi. Let me go ahead and crank it up real quick. Come on. Um. Hi. No, 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 no. Why does she insist on doing this? Anyway. Yeah, and if this gets a little loud, then I'll go and I'll adjust it later. That could be a problem for future us. All right. Cool. Let's go, uh... To spend some jades. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Oh, yeah, uh, we have some new emotes. Um, we got rave emote, we've got um, an animated bonk, and the one who's tier two gets to use the animated credit card swipe. <laughs> I, I love that one. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like we're just gonna have to do a bunch of single pulls. Oh, wow, I have eight green guys. Damn, okay. All right, cool. Let's just, uh, we'll see how it goes. No. Oh, hello. Ooh, okay, okay. I'm not gonna say no to that. <laughs> All right, hey, it'd be really nice if I could, you know, yoink a single pole, um, light count. Yeah, y'all, <laughs> hey, um, gotcha gods. Y'all know how much money I spent last week on, um, on e fixing Topaz and getting getting a Robin and her light comb. Be nice if y'all threw me a solid. <laughs> it'd be would be super nice. Y'all y'all threw me a solid. Pretty please. Please, gotcha gods. Am I S fiving? No, that's not the intention. I'll just throw jades at it until or unless or, or in case it comes home, really, but that's not the intention. One more to go. Sigh. Oh, we get another one. Hello. Wait, I think that means we have enough whale dust to hehehe. <laughs> another one. One more. Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Alice definitely had the worst of it. That poor girl. <laughs> Sigh. Okay. And now we've got pure fiction. Not pure fiction. Uh, memory of... Chaos, but that's the problem for after we finish story stuff. <laughs> anyway. All right, let's just, uh, we, we go. We go for it. Where's Numby? Oh. I was like, buddy, where'd you go, buddy? Oh, shit, hello? Hello, hello? 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 Oh, <gasps> yoink. 
No, 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 no. Yoink. There you go. And a special little yoink. There we go. You pulled Topaz and got her in 30 pulls. Hell yeah. Well, I'm glad the VA blessing worked on you guys um, and just kind of fucked me up, but um, it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> as long as you guys win, that's all that matters. I get my Topaz eventually. IPC team does crazy in the newest MOC. Hell yeah. Damn, Alejandro lost every 50-50? That fucking sucks. Damn, dude. Okie dokie. Cute. Can I not? Oh, okay, cool. I can do that. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I gotta pass on Booty Hill. I, uh... And it's one of those, like, I would like to get... Like... I would like to get Firefly, but I don't think I'm, I think I'm just gonna see how free to play we can get from there. I don't know, I'm, I'm kinda, I'm kinda done with spending a shit ton of money, man. Majindex 69 oh, tip bro. $50. Thank you for your support. Bag. My reimbursement for you sending me Topaz luck, which it worked. Time to return the luck back. Three. Bag. Oh my God! Ah! <gasps> Thank you, thank you. I truly appreciate that. Thank you, Mag. You are so very kind. Okay, all right. We're gonna go snag a little fifty, a little fifty, fifty dollar pull, a little fifty dollar whatever. I'm gonna piss this guy off really quick. Hold on. Hee 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 hee. And hopefully that will uh, result in uh, another, another. What's it called? Hold on a second. Let me top up. Y'all don't get to see my. My, 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 my private shit. Hold on, where's my, uh, uh, where's my game window? Bloop, all right. Now y'all just get the duck. Am I gonna try for Jade? Hell yeah, I'm going for Jade. Hell yeah, I'm going for Jade. I mean, have you seen her? Look at that woman. God damn. I'm adventuring and still hitting. Blue Sprint at fifty dollars. Thank you for your support. You can also have my luck for getting me a Swift E6. Boom! Oh, guys! Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate you all so much. Mods, y'all know you never have to do that shit, right? Y'all just want to see me cry. <laughs> Alright, let me go buy another pack then. Hold on. <laughs> I just opened up the $50 one. I guess we're just gonna scoot on over to the 100 <laughs> It's fine. We get airline points for this. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh, there you go. Now you can see... <laughs> Using the new Topaz <laughs> emote. Oh my god. Hey, right, let's see where this gets us. Let's see where it goes. Oh my god, we get 50 pulls. Okie dokie. Yippee! Hey, thanks for the sub! Welcome in! Alright. Alright, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know, there's a non zero chance that I'm gonna pull like four of these in one 10 pull. You know, it is not. Is the duck gonna kill the phone today? Let me see. Yes, it's gone down four percent since I plugged it in. <laughs> if we need to hop onto my webcam and um, make the stream a little crunchy later, that's fine. All right, y'all. Fingers crossed. Let's go. No. All right, it's fine. We'll go again. Please. Please, 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 Hoyo, please, please, gotcha gods, please, please, R and Jesus, please, please. Fuck. Okay. Okay. Um. 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 I'm not gonna say the doctor line. Maybe. I swear to God. I swear to God. Numby, you're huge. 
Okay, that didn't work. Sigh. Damn, dude. I don't even know how many pulls we're in on this. Alright, whatever. Numby, you're a chunky little babe! Yoshiko underscore what? Steph tipped $50. Yo Thank you for your support. Let's add another 50 for my favorite ducky. Less than three. <laughs> Steph! Yo! This is one reason why I'm glad I don't go on camera because my face rain. <laughs> Guys, ah, you all are too kind to me, truly. Thank you. I appreciate you all. I appreciate you all so, so much. <laughs> you came in late. What'd you miss? Just pure kindness and um, everyone wanting to watch me gamble again. Um, <laughs> I win, we all win, right? <laughs> Cause y'all get the What? Abhorian tipped one hundred dollars. Thank you for your support. Uh -huh. I owe the IPC some money. Here's my payment. Ah, guys! <sighs> okay. All right. I guess we're going for that S five. I guess we're going for S five. I suppose we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. My chat's moving too fast. I can't even see what that name was. Started with an A. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Where where did it go? Ar Ardo Ar Ar Ardhor Ar Ardhorian. Thank you. I appreciate you so very much. Thank you. You all are so 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 sweet. I appreciate it. All right. Well, we're going back to black screen so I can uh uh uh. <laughs> All for the Amber Lord, precisely. All for my credit card points. All for my airline points. All for United Airlines. I do love United Airlines. You know, I had the option. Um, I'm, I'm heading over to visit a friend in a couple weeks. And I had the option to fly either the closer airline, uh, either the closer, um, um, what's it called, airport to me, or the further airport for me. The further airport for me was cheaper by, like, a lot. But I would fly Spirit, um, right? I mean, flying Spirit, I, I don't really have an issue with Spirit. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Spirit Airlines, uh. So I was like, uh, you know, I can fly Spirit. It's fine. I'll just, like, I'll, like, bare bones, like, backpack it. It's cool. I mean, for a, a cross-country flight for $150, I'm not going to say no. Fuck yeah. I'm going to go visit my friend for his birthday. So um, I was looking at flights, and then I went, you know... I do have a United card. Let, let's just go and see. Let's just go and take a little peek at the airport that's like 10 minutes from my house. And let's see. Take a little peeky peek and see um, how, how, much, how much the flight will be. And if I like bare bones that one after selecting my seats and everything, um, it was like the same price because of my credit card perks and my, um, what is it called? My uh, airline points. So, yeah, 150 cross country, but that was like random seat selection, no carry on bags. But like, I have a very large backpack that counts as a personal item. So, I was just going to try and just, you know, raw dog that, <laughs> make it work. <laughs> but um, also, the other airport, the cheaper airport, was like 45 minutes away. And I was like, well, if I were to consider the value of a dollar, oh, boom, thank you for gifting it sub to Adhorian, uh, Ard, Ardhor. Art Horian? Art oh, fuck, I'm gonna keep fucking that shit up. Ah, thank you for the life gift subs, boom! Ah, Yo! Y'all are killing me. My heart. My heart, my heart, my heart, my heart, my heart. But yeah, um, um, I ended up spending a little more. Uh, I mean, like, yeah, I'm flying, like, DC to LA for, like, $250 because I got airline points from United. Like, and technically, technically, I do get, like, like a carry-on now. Oh, thank you for gifting a sub. Thank you, thank you. You guys are just so nice today. Like, so, so, so nice. Y'all are so sweet. I would give you a hug if you were, you know, embodied into, into one being, the, the entirety of, of everyone here. If y'all were clustered into, like, one being, let's say, like, like a dog. Like, if y'all were, like, a puppy, I'd give y'all a hug. Ah, resub at tier three. Ah, thank you. Enjoy your free to play emote. <laughs> it's 
see what I did there. I totally stole that from Mina. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> yeah! Elysius the Wanderer gifted 10 subs. Tissum. y'all are even here okay y'all are just sitting here watching me just like like bitch and mumble and like just say fuck all in front of my computer and gamble and y'all are like you know what yeah, yeah yep we're just gonna yep we want the premium experience <laughs> so thank you truly guys thank you all right let's do it deadpool we got 95 95 tickets let's go Bro, I swear to God, I'm creeping ever so closer to hard pity every single time. <laughs> and the, the, the cute <laughs> Mag! Y'all are killing. This is a good Monday. God damn. What a what a good day. Yeah, seriously, guys, gamble responsibly. I mean, at the end of the day, gotcha games are gambling like simulators. I mean, it, it frankly, it is what it is. That is that is just kind of how it is. Personally, in my opinion. I get happiness from playing a game I enjoy, whether it means I'm picking up a $70 game like at at like GameStop or spending $70 pulling for a character on a game that I'm going to play for the next couple years. So, um, yeah, just just spend money responsibly, guys. I know it's really fun to watch people spend a lot of money and pull, especially VAs and stuff. But yes, please, 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 please be responsible. Also, thank you for the Prime sub. All right, let's go. I swear to God, if this one doesn't do it, if this one doesn't do it, if this one doesn't do it. Okay, okay, this Yay! one did it. Wait. Yay! Yay! Yo! Oh my it god! Is the Wanderer gifted 25 subs. To oh, is this the Wanderer 25 gift subs? Sheesh! Sheesh, bro! Okay, if this one, if this one fails, the 75-25, I'm gonna be big mad. I'm gonna be big mad. Oh my god, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Ah. Please, please, please give me the hooey. There she blows, yeah. The bare minimum result! <laughs> Amazing. All right, let's see how many more of these we can take home, huh? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Okay, trash. Goodbye. Oh my god, are we S5? <laughs> well, we're, we're slowly creeping over to S5 at this point, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we're at S3 now. How many do I need? I need two more. Two more. All right. What? Hello? Oh, hello? Uh. Ah. Please don't fuck this up. <laughs> Please don't fuck this up. Please. Yes! <laughs> double? Maybe? Maybe double? Double? Double, double, double? Maybe double? Nah, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. Alright, ah, oh, we are one more! Can we get, can we get one more light cone in 45 pulls, y'all? Can we get one more light cone in 45 pulls? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Alright. Trash. Okay. We go again. Come on! Trash. Okay, okay, okay. I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe. Trash. Come on! Make me- No way! 
No fucking way! Yo! I'm gonna flow up. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> oh my god. Chat, you mad lads. We did it. <laughs> we did it. <gasps> oh my god. Things I did not expect to do today. <laughs> Oh my god. Yo! Holy shit! Okay. Oh my god. Yep, we are looking at five, five tickets to spare. <gasps> you know what? Let's just do a bunch of single pulls over here now. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. Just get rid of these fucking things, right? <laughs> I have to test it out now? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna have to test it out now. I have no choice. Let's do, uh, we can do a quick, um... Uh, memory of chaos to see for the amber lord yeah right <laughs> come on just get rid of these little things go oh, hello lodger one more nice i don't even want to know how many i have 300 Oof. okay well it's not as bad as i thought it would be it's fine we're gonna save that for next time all right let's uh whoo memory of chaos that's what i meant i don't i can't remember what i said last time but memory of chaos god damn guys <laughs> gotcha luck will increase by 1,000%. Aw, thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, angry memer. <laughs> that was a sweet message. <laughs> oh, God. All right, y'all. Look at that. Oh, oh no. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Ah! <laughs> Oh man. I'm just gonna hee 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 he. Yoink. Oh my god. How many? How, does it put me at a hundred crit rate? You know what? Probably. Almost. Oh, it's okay, a little higher. I had her crit rate a little on the lower side, so um honestly, I'm super I'm super okay with that. Um ba 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 what was I gonna say? Uh how many pulls was that? How many pulls was that? Hold on, let me snooze that ad real quick. All right, let's, uh, hold on. I need, I need to know, oh, sorry, dude. I need to know how many, oh wait, oh shit, fuck. Come on, go back. Thank you. Like 150, we got three of them in 150. I can't see, okay. Oh, it's not gonna update because it needs like two hours, doesn't it? Shit. 150. Wow. Wait, 150 to pull four copies or to pull three copies? So three, three and 150 pulls. Oh, we did pull three copies. That's right. Holy shit. You know, while the iron's still hot, let me just like tell, tell Twitter what happened here because this is so funny. What a Monday. Oh my god. He 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 did Alice S five Robin? Good question. <laughs> All right. 
Man. My heart. My heart. What was it? <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, yeah, let me go ask Alice really quick, because I don't know whether or not she actually did. That's a good question. Also. I think that's like the best luck I've ever had. Like with pulling like three copies on 150. That's fucking nuts. That's like early days, like like early Sam gotcha days. Truly, like truly, 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 truly. <laughs> oh, boom. <laughs> that's <a> great shot. <laughs> that's funny as fuck. That's funny as fuck. <gasps> oh, man. <sighs> OK, uh, I was going to message Alice. That's what I was going to do. Uh. Did you S5 Robin my chat wants to know? Ah! Do I pull on every banner? Not every banner. I, I've skipped quite a few this year just because I was um, kind of just waiting to see when Topaz was going to rerun. And then adventuring happened. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I usually, I usually don't pull on every banner. It just, you know, if, if I like the character, then I pull. So if I like their kit, I pull. I'm a, I'm a simple girly. Okay, wait, is there a, um, a what's it called in here? Can I teleport back in here? Okay, perfect. All right, let's, let's do some, let's do some, um, memory of chaos real quick. Let's go test around. Who am I getting next? Um, probably Firefly, if we're being honest. I'm trying not to, like, power creep my own team, though. Like, I want to, I want to enjoy the team that I have. Forgotten hall? Uh, yes. All right. I wonder how far I can... If I just challenge seven, will it give me the rewards for everything up to seven? Or is it... Oh, bless. Okay, cool. We'll be fine then. Okay. Every attack launched by an ally. One memory. Blah, blah, blah. Six attacks. Memories. Um, I don't know what that means. Only if I three star it. Oh, let's just bump down one just in case. <laughs> um, wait. Oh, look at that. It says it right up here. Oh, so all I have to do is just attack. Oh, that includes follow-up attacks too. Damn, dude. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, whatever. Let's just go. Uh, I don't know, like big. Big, big, funny number team. Plus, um, I don't even know if my Claire is built enough. I'm not going to lie. Oh, wait, hold on. We're going to find out. Um, I don't know what to do with you. What do I do with you? You, you. I don't know. Um, you. I'm truly not even, like, giving a shit about this team. All right, I just want the. I just want to see what happens. <laughs> All right. Hey, you. This is gonna be Time nuts. To check your books. This is gonna be nuts. Feeling lucky. Let the show begin. For the theater of the mediocre. Unk. Two e sixes. Yes, we have two e sixes on this team. We're just gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna auto it. Fuck yeah, I have these six adventure. Zero points. Right! Investing in victory means playing the long game! Phew! Okay, I've seen I've seen bigger numbers. Doris Echo. Welcome to Knowledge, the measure of truth and falsehood. The song has been stuck in my head like nonstop. No, we are not e6ing Jade. We are not e6ing the ten stone hearts. That's not gonna happen. It happened with two of them. We're not doing it again. We clipped it last chat. Listen, listen, listen. We are not 
guys. We are we are not we are not e sixing all of the ten stone hearts. That's not going to happen. I'm not pulling a Mina. I'm not gonna e six Robin. Dead ass. We are not doing it, guys. High threat target ahead. Who said that? Oh, that was far. <laughs> I've never used Throg in battle. Hold on. But Jade, though, we are getting Jade. We're just not going to E6 Jade, okay? <laughs> I mean, they can keep asking for what it's worth. I'm just going to keep saying, fuck no. So... <laughs> They're just going to be sorely disappointed. <laughs> I commend like, I hope y'all uh, are okay with disappointment. E1, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll, we'll pull as many as it takes to, like, I don't know, get, get her. What if Hoyo makes an animation of Jade and Topaz? Bro, I don't know. Have they, I mean, like, they, they've talked the one time, but we'll see. Oh, dang. Okay, Jingyuan. What the fuck? No mercy. I know Aiden's gonna E6 Firefly, so... Can you find the answer? I don't even know if I've encountered this enemy, like, in the game yet. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I realize I don't have a healer. Oh well, that's a problem for future me. Annihilate. Dang! Here, it's thunder. Oh, there's more. Lol. I did not realize that. Are we doing group pulls for uh, group pulls for boot hill? Probably. I don't know. I gotta ask Andrew. Andrew would probably be the one to host it, TBH. I know, um, Alice hosted it last time because she wanted it. Okay. Um, oh no. My, my, my game crashed. <laughs> anyway, you know what? In that case, let's just go straight to 07, okay? Um, oh, nice. Oh no, I want my, oh wait, even better. Hold on. Let's just go straight, um, for some bibbity. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fuck it, we ball. Let's go. Um, I don't want to split my perfect team into. I want to watch the big funny numbers. If this doesn't work, then yeah, I'll go back and I'll do it. Hey, you. Time, Time to, to check, check your, your books. books. Um, what was I saying? Feeling lucky. Totally forgot what I was saying. For the fear of I don't think it was that important. I'm not going to lie. Show begin. Uh, anyway, that'll show up eventually. Oh, 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 um, I don't know. I, uh, 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 Alice hosted last time because she wanted to pull and E6. And I was like, hell yeah. And then we just kept adding more people. So if Andrew wants to do it, by all means, he's more than welcome to. I probably won't stream it though because I wouldn't be pulling for any characters or myself in particular. Oh, thank you for the hydrate. I do need water. What a pop. God damn. Woo! God damn. That's a little crazy. Hey, thanks for the reset. Welcome back. Welcome back. High threat target ahead. High threat target. He says. What are you outside? Zero cycles on auto. Fuck yeah. I like I always say. If I can't finish them something on auto, I just need to build my team better. 
Surely I can play strategically and like actually play, but like why do that when the game can do it for me? And it, it doesn't make bad calls per se. Like the game, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with how the game handles itself when you're autoing. So is my Ting Yun belt? Yeah, she is. I just haven't like, like played her in a minute. I don't know. I'm. Eh. I don't really use my four stars. <laughs> like, if I spend money on the five stars, why am I gonna use the four stars, right? Right? World cleansing dragon. Fuck it, we auto. Fuck yeah. Have I built Gallagher? No. I haven't. <laughs> I should probably uh, build, um... Wahua! Wahua, I need you, girly! Okay, uh, alright, there you go. Well, that didn't... Okay, there we go, there we go. Have I started a 2.2 story? Yeah! Um, I just got back to... Mi Mikkel? Mikkel? Um, we had, like, a little tour. We got back to Mikkel, and now we're doing the game show thing. World cleansing dragon. <laughs> or devils. Paniconi got talent. Yeah, sure, that one. Am I finishing the quest today? Fuck, dude, I don't know. Depends on how much longer we have. I did start stream a little later than usual today. Um, I had a session earlier, and um, um, my schedule tomorrow is pretty clear. I don't have to wake up on purpose, so we'll see. See how far we get. It's <laughs> not the intent to finish, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Hell yeah. Wee! Good shit. Look at that. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Hey, hey, hey. I would say, wow, look, now we can pull on more ship. We have nothing left to pull. Ha ha ha. I'm broadcast. not Good evening, gonna build Robin any more than I am. Oh my gosh, sorry. My messages are blowing up. Ugh. I could turn them off, but I'm not gonna. My other friends are bleh, they saw the thingy. Um, ordering nameless honor. Nice. Oh my god, my face is so itchy. It's that time of year, friends. It's that time of year, friends. Alright. Everyone's like, am I sick or is it allergies? That was me yesterday. I woke up from a nap and my throat felt like straight ass. And I was like, am I sick or is it allergies? I probably shouldn't be talking today. Um, hold on, let me uh, catch up on this. Uh, Duck Sam has made an appearance. Yep, Sam doesn't want to shower face today. Yeah, this shit is, <laughs> I've, I've heard from many, many, many people. This is the longest quest. Bro? Y'all! <laughs> Y'all! My mods took a screenshot of my duck doing like the shit face, shit, shit eating grin expression and made it the fucking chat group image. <laughs> That's funny as fuck. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> I'm cracking up. I'm cracking up. <sighs> Why, why do I have to tour? Why? Oh, friends. Okay, never mind, never mind. Yeah, W mods. Mods be modding. I love my mods. What a great team. I appreciate y'all so much. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait. Hold on. I was gonna. There we go. All right. Anyway. Hello? Oh, is it. Is it. Is it. Is it. Oh, shop. Oh, wait a second. Ooh, thank you. That's a thank you. I'm glad it told me. Okay. 
Actually, now that I have a ton of like the gold um, upgrade thingies, let me see if there's anyone's relics I still need to build really quick. Make sure, I feel like I'm missing something. Like someone's relics aren't totally done or I'm like, okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> this girl. Let's just go ahead and pop those up real quick. Dang, that fucking sucks. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> well, we're just gonna we're just gonna keep doing this for a second. <laughs> Cause I don't wanna have to go back and salvage. That's a lot of work. I wish there was a button to salvage. Just like hop in and salvage. They did that in the the, the resin thing. Oh dang. Wow, this is using everything. Alright, whatever. Forgot how many resources like going up to 15 takes. Like I don't think I have anything left. Yeah, nah. I don't got shit. All right, it's fine. There should be a function. I mean, I'm sure there is one. I just haven't seen one exactly from that page. Oh, hello. How uh, how is my day to day basis with VA? Is it rewarding? I adore being an actor. I love it so much. My day to day changes like extensively depending on like my session schedule. Um, and like my audition uh, volume and, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but generally I usually spend at least like two hours doing like administrative stuff. So following up on invoices, like logging my auditions, making sure my finances are in order, making sure that any of my expenses, like the um, receipts are, 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 um, are logged and everything at the end of the day. Um, I am a freelancer and a business owner, so I need to be able to take care of, um, you know, my business as a business. So usually about an hour to two hours of that a day, but I'm almost always multitasking, so I get a little sidetracked there. Um, oh goodness. What? Okay. Anyway, um, and then it really just depends on my like sessions. Um, if I have auditions, I'll usually do them like midday-ish, or I'll, I'll do them like as they come in. Oh! Speedy Falcon, Falcon, gifted ten subs. Ah! Thank some. you, thank you for the ten gift subs. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Do I use an accountant? If not, I'm so sorry. Um, I used an accountant last year and it wasn't my favorite experience. I think I'm just a little too territorial about my money. <laughs> um, I did do my own taxes this year. Um, I understand it like like 85%. And if I don't understand, I purchased like the extra like message, a, a, a tax accountant, um, quick chat thing. Honestly, the, the program or well, the software that I use, um, Free Tax USA is one, I adore it. Two, it's so straightforward that honestly, I'm fine. Also, um, plenty of you guys already know this, but I went to business school twice. I have an MSBA, so I understand finances and like the structure of running a business and like what counts as an expense and, you know, and, like stuff like that. So um, it's really not that big of an issue for me. Um, I just, you know, as soon as I make an expense, I export my receipt into a folder um, and I log it in a spreadsheet. And then as soon as I get an invoice in, I log it into a spreadsheet. And as soon as I get a remittance advice in, I put that in a spreadsheet. <laughs> Is an MSBA different from an MBA? Yeah. So I was a little stubborn and I had the choice between an MBA or an MSBA. An MSBA is a Master of Science in Business Administration. Thank you, thank you for the Prime sub. So I decided to go with the Master of Science in Business Administration, except um, instead of the Master of Business Administration, because um, basically the MBA was an entire, let me how to put this. It's pretty much my, my undergrad program smashed into two years, but with more of like a leadership approach. A lot of MBA programs are, you know, geared towards working professionals who are looking to advance in their career. So for example, someone who's like a manager who wants to go corporate or someone who is like, you know, like a, um, what is it called? Like a senior consultant looking to go manager or whatever. A lot of companies these days do require master's degrees, especially where where I live, um, just because there are so many headquarters and, and whatnot. So um, 
Also, MBA programs are a lot of cash cow MBA programs out there. So if I were to do an MBA, I would want to go to like a brand name MBA because then you get the entire alumni network and then you get the uh, the, the support and you have all of the, um, what is it called? For lack of a better way of putting it, like amenities of getting like a brand name MBA. Also, I did school while working full time and like a real ass MBA would have been too much to handle with work. Um, so, um, yeah, no, definitely get a master's only if your job requires it. I made the mistake of getting a master's degree without a sponsor, and um, I ended up going very, very much into debt. Um, but it's okay. Um, I'm not using it, but I'm using it, but I'm also not using it. But anyway, or uh, long story short, yes, I do my own taxes because I, I don't really have an issue with it. And if I do have questions, I have friends who do taxes, and I uh, also message the people who also do taxes so yeah it just took a little bit of time you know it takes a couple hours a lot of hours over like a bunch of months also i have to wait for all the damn what is it um 1099s to come in because you know voice actors are freelancers so it's a it's a lot but i don't know i like keeping up at my own pace because i do everything you know at my, i just want to get it done oh thank you you guys are sweet <laughs> I just, I, I love what I do. I'm just grateful I'm able to like scoot all of these skills over to what I do now because if I, oh, anyway, hold on, hold on. The original question, MSBA different from an MBA, Master of Science in Business Administration focuses more on like the, um, I don't want to say the STEM aspect of a business degree, um, but I mean like Master of Science is, is different than a Master of Business Administration. Basically, we just go a little more into depth with um, like, math stuff whereas like MBA has a lot of like leadership theory like we have leadership theory in my MSBA program because a lot of the um classes overlap if I had taken like one more semester I would have gotten a dual MBA MSBA but I was like nope I'm done never mind um but anyway a lot of my classes were like revenue management and like strategic management but from a financial perspective and you know of course taking like accounting again and all that stuff but basically all my classes were in spreadsheets so I do love my spreadsheets, you know, and writing like amortization schedules from scratch and in Google Sheets and, you know, all, all that good stuff. So, yeah, I was like, I want more of the applicable math based stuff because it differentiates me in the job market. But <laughs> jokes on me. We're not using all that shit anymore. But I don't know. Maybe one day it'll come in handy. Master's degree is like a new bachelor's degree anyway. Everyone's getting master's. So, woof. But yeah, yeah, MBA, just to get into the corporate world, that is a good point. Like, that, that is basically, yeah, that, that's why I got my master's degree. I decided, um, like, to do it because I wanted to go corporate. I live very close to some, like, major hotel brand um, headquarters. And um, I studied hospitality management in undergrad, and I have an extensive background in hospitality management. So I wanted to go corporate um, and work for one of those companies, um, which the um, MSBA would have done wonders for. But then um, we said, no, never mind. <laughs> I started voice acting right as I finished my master's degree. So... <laughs> No, when I'm when I y'all when I say it was scary when I as I kept learning about Topaz, I was like, "What the fuck? What? How? What? Hold on a second. This is weird. <laughs> this is really weird, guys. <laughs> you guys are so sweet. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> is my supervisor's name Jade? <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, seriously, I was like, are y'all in my house? Are you in my walls? Like, what is going on? Did y'all, like, Google on my shit? <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, moral of the story, if there's any one thing you guys walk away from, do not get a master's degree until you absolutely require it. And if you can get someone else to pay for it, even better, because otherwise you take out student loans. And when you get a master's degree and you take out student loans, if you take out federal student loans, the interest rates are one, higher than your interest rates for undergrad. And two, now you're a real adult and your parents can't help you with it at all. So you put all your own finances in there, not theirs. So <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It's a whole headache and a half. But trust me, I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. I really, I, I, I enjoyed my time in grad school. Honestly, my grad school classes were some of my favorite ever. They were extremely applicable, and I was able to really, like, connect with the, 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 
the uh, source material because of um, the industry I was working in at the time. Did I get any scholarships? Nope. <laughs> Real talk, I like barely scraped through undergrad and I talked my way into grad school because my GPA was way too low. And um, I was like, listen, <laughs> I have the experience. Um, my brain just was not braining throughout undergrad. Um, so... <laughs> No, dead ass. Hold on. If I could just really quick, y'all, a degree is a degree. A degree is a degree. I mean, of course, your degree, like, does matter. But at the end of the day, a piece of paper is a piece of paper. I graduated second to last in my entire class in my department because my mental health was in the fucking garbage compactor for like all four years. I failed so many classes because I just could not get out of bed and took so, so, so many summer and winter classes just to graduate on time because I'm a first generation college student. And I was like, fuck dude, I'm not gonna make my Asian mother disappointed in me. We're graduating on time, which there's nothing wrong with also taking your time. I uh, just, uh, I made the, the bad decision to uh, <laughs> take out private loans to get those off semester classes because, um, federal student loans weren't covering it. But anyway, that's a different story. Um, anyway, yes. Um, I got the piece of paper. See us get degrees. Hell fucking yeah. Uh, had work experience. Did my interview for grad school. Got in. Graduated grad school with a 3.8. So, moral of the story is we're all where we need to be when we need to be there. It is what it is. And I believe in you. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, dude. College is rough, especially with mental health issues, because you're on your own for the first time as an adult with no... I mean, you've got responsibilities, but, like, you know, you get to be on your own, and you don't have someone breathing down your neck to make you go somewhere, so if you want to sleep through your class because your brain won't turn on, then by all means, no one's making you get out of bed. So that that's, that's a slippery slope, speaking from experience. But, yeah. All right, where are we going? Holy shit, what? All right, well, <laughs> we're going to see what that's about in a minute. All right, now let's actually start the story shit. <sighs> also, yeah, no, dude, the job market's also like, what? Not fun. I do not envy anyone who is job hunting right now. The best of luck to all of you who That's are. This I don't like this. Why? Why are these all here? That's that can't be good. Oh, hello. With boundless possibilities. Honestly, there's a whole lot of 2024 shit all fucked up. Job markets fucked up. The housing markets fucked up. Interest rates are fucked up. Barb. Now, all, all y'all new grads and everyone who is graduating, one congratulations to you got it. It's a lot but you got it. You can do anything if you put your mind and a shit ton of ambition into it. it just takes a lot of perseverance and a lot of gaslighting yourself that um, you got this, even if you don't got this, just keep saying you got this until you actually do got this. Just put that out into the universe, okay? Trust me, trust me, that's how I survived. <laughs> oh, hello. Reminds My husband's me of the here. Grand occasion when Pentacony was first established. I was still a young, bright-eyed lad back then. Oh Your yeah, dude, resume writing and interview skills, two big, 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 big things to be proficient life. on. Once, during a all about them first impressions. Day, I passed out and was resuscitated by a drink from Mr. Sousa. That sweet taste has since been Chat touched says, in Hi, my Mr. mind. Slave. And that was what drove me to create the soul glad that we all says, Hello, know the chat. and love today. The dream chasing era was truly a wondrous time. Oh, I miss those days and the watchmaker. Scorch Sand Hall is my homage to that time. I forgot we were seeing Aideen. I wholeheartedly hope you make it to the finish and emerge as the next superstars of Pentacle. Now then, 
Is there anything you'd like to say before the competition officially begins? Ha! Ah. I love when they shift post. This is so good. Now nah, we win. Ha ha! That's the trailblazing spirit. How about you, Miss March? Hello, everyone! Next up, get ready for the Mega March 7th Adventure, where I'm going to break the speedrun world record! Trailblazing into the uncharted and challenging the limits. That's Miss March 7th for you. How about Miss Firefly? I hope that by the end of this journey, everyone will have achieved the outcome that they hoped for. Ah, <laughs> a wonderful wish! Miss Himiko, what are you expecting from your team? Safety first, everyone. <laughs> Simple words. She said but safety oh, first. That's oh. ominous. I don't like that shit. Waiting for you. I realize the TVs have Sunday and Robin in the background. That era. The first two stages offer two distinct paths to choose from, with unique challenges on each route. And in the last stage, you will face off against a champion who has defended the title to this very day. A beloved contender whose noble virtues are unrivaled. Those are the rules. Not gonna lie. Simple. I don't Everyone remember why we're clear? here. Now, I hereby announce that the 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises, has started. Everyone, as the Charmony Festival is drawing closer, we must reach the end as quickly as possible. Factoring in efficiency and safety, splitting up into two groups is the best choice. March and I haven't known Miss Firefly for too long. Oh, trying to get into the theater. Okay, familiar. perfect. It'd probably be better if the two of you paired up. Fine by me. Let's do it. All right. I don't have a problem with that. I like how we're just like, yeah, we're just gonna go win a whole contest. We're, you know, not gonna break in. We'll split into the assigned groups then. Let's not waste time. <laughs> Bless you. Oh boy. A blade reporter. Hey, thanks for the sub. Welcome in. I have fans now. Lol. Cute. I'm not reading all that. This is a very long black screen. What are you right now? Calm? Thank you, happy. Oh no, she's yapping. Alright, cool. Never mind. I. Oh my god, this is so crazy looking. Bro, what? Welcome to the first stage of Soul Glad Enterprises' 33rd Scorch Sand Festival of the 20th season Dreamplay Fantasia! In this stage, you can choose between two challenges, the school of acting or school of action. In the school of acting challenge, you have to complete three performances from three scripts and move the panel judges. In the school of action challenge, you have to defeat three groups of enemies convincingly and reach the end. Y'all, we have E6, S5, Topaz now. We're fighting. We're fighting every chance we get. <laughs> oh, it's Pinball! Yay! That's cute. Cute! 
What is that? Acting challenge. Action challenge. Can I auto it though? The champion's crown awaits you on the stage. Welcome to the arena of action stars. Cute. Competitors, allow me to. Oh, I have to actually fight. Damn. To you. Oh, we can auto. There okay, well, we'll figure it out. Stages up ahead, each with their own challenges. The, it's worth mentioning that the fastest time for this stage was achieved by a contestant with fiery red hair. Astoundingly, he overcame all enemies across the three stages in only five minutes. Time is of the essence. <sighs> oh, time is of the essence. It's a great thing. I just, you know, these six tests, five of them. Ah, oh, Numbi! Oh, thanks, buddy. Contestants, you are about to confront the monsters of the prime as dream chasers. Gonna... Who... Oh! Huh? Oh, 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 glad is ours. Oh. Some value, I suppose. You turn Oh, on. I forgot to switch out, Robin. All will be swept away by the wind. Oh, that was cute. Knowledge, the measure of truth and falsehood. Liquidation. Free. Go, Nappy. So glad. Pretty simple. <laughs> Oh boy, we got another one. Here, let me go shift my party around real quick. Congratulations on becoming a first just as you're about to give why is our because isn't this just product so ah. guard, the uh. Right Investing in victory means playing the bomb game Harmony and unison Mediocre uh, Bust Or maybe I'll take it off Confiscated. Oh. The world kisses me with pain, and I provide with soul glad in return. Woo! Hell yeah. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter whether or not I do this. Oh, hello. No, not that one. That one. There we go. Yep, that is an E6 S5 Topaz. Hee hee hee. I got like real monsters up there now, okay. Oh my god, I know, right? I keep forgetting we have two E6s on changes, here now. No matter insane. how insane. None will take my soul glide away. Oh dinosaur crap. He said oh dinosaur. <laughs> Dangerous thoughts. Hello, where's my mouse? There we go. Doors echo. Your head. The body withers. 
but the soul glad name shall not. <sighs> you truly are a beast, more than I can ever be. Huh. That should do it. Okay, let's go. Mr. Gang is waiting for us. Isn't this fight way off from the actual storyline? Transforming into a dinosaur isn't imaginative enough for you? This is the sort of magic only seen on Penacony. Anyway, let's get back on track. Where were we? Oh, that's right. After an extended battle, you finally emerged victorious! But the companion who journeyed to Penacony with you chose to leave, having lost all hope. Project Rap! Oh shit, we got more? Where are they? Bro, Numby is just taking off, man! Wait, did I get the other guy too? Okay, yeah, I did, we're good. Wait, hold on. Is there something over here I have to interact with? Never mind, I thought I saw a little sparkle. A little sparkle, sparkle. Oh, hello, Numby! Thank you, sweet baby! What is this? Oh! There's so much music I haven't, like, unlocked yet. I need to go to the what's it called and uh, unlock it. The stage, but more importantly, are you having fun? <laughs> fun is more important than success. Look at the time. You finished much faster than that red-haired contestant did. Red-haired contestant. That red-haired contestant. Yumiko? Who is that exactly? You'll find out eventually, but only if you clear the next test first. Welcome to the second stage of the third Dude, yes, when Hoyo makes an official Numby plushie, season, it is so Hoyo over, guys. So glad Enterprises, gunfire time! You have the option to choose gunfire and undergo Brother Hanu's trial Luka? or time. I don't know how many redheads there are in this game, I'm not trial. trying. And now... Make your choice. He's six, that's five numby plushie. Um, gunfire trial or time trial? Wait, gunfire time? What, what are these? Time trial, gunfire, what is this? I don't know what these are. Help! Find out? Clocky or Hanu? Which one's Clocky? <laughs> time travel was Clocky stuff. Okay, cool. I don't like Hanu stuff. Sorry. Dear friends, welcome to the wonderful world created by the Watchmaker. Yeah, the Hanu level. I don't like stealth, guys. Come on. Some of y'all already know this. I don't fuck with stealth, guys. <laughs> it's said that the Watchmaker dreamed up the idea of Clocky when he was just a boy. Back then, he was merely an apprentice in a clock shop. And one night, he dreamt that all the broken clocks started sprouting arms and legs. That's nightmare fuel, like but okay. Like a skilled pilot, he steered them towards the right path. As a classic figure who grew up with many, clock contestants, may you- The trial of time. <laughs> yeah, stealth gives me so much anxiety personally, also. I just, I don't, I don't fuck with it, guys. I just don't fuck with it. <laughs> My duck has like reconfigured so that it's like facing just straight up. Okay, there we go. Let's adjust that. I just don't want it to be peering into anyone's soul in particular. Oh. Nah, we're gonna do a puzzle first. We're gonna make you wait, my dude. Did it just speak? There we go. Me a little yoink. Come here. 
He said, hello. Burby. I need to go back and find all these guys. Oh, it's so cute. We got an alfalfa salad. <gasps> we get a chest. Thank you. Yay, fodder. All right, come on, Numby. There we go. Boop. Is there any other ones, buddy? Any others? Did I, should I go look for anything else? Okay, cool. We do get another one. Yeah, oh. Okay. He voices the birds? I know that Annalisa voiced at least a few of them. I just don't know which ones. Oh, I know for a fact the first one that you meet. I'm like 99% sure that one's Annalisa. I like the gumball. That was adorable. I love how, like, diverse and entertaining they're making these enemies. They're so cute. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Yes, the one with the clocky statue. I'm worth having Firefly. I mean, I, I plan on pulling for Firefly. I'm just probably not gonna put Hard work pays real money. Off. Are there any fun NPCs I've voiced in Star Rail? Um, I had done a couple of them in my first Topaz session, but I've never found them, so I'm pretty sure they got yoinked. Um, I'm, I, I think, I don't know for sure, but I think it's because my, my vocal print is just so specific. Um, and I know they don't really like, they like, they like actors with a ton of versatility if they're going to put like one person to do a bunch of stuff in game. So I feel like they probably were like, yeah, Sam's voice is just very, uh, we can, we can point it out of a crowd. So, uh, <laughs> Harmony and unity. I mean, I, I I can, like, you know, do other voice prints, but probably just got to the point where it was like, you know what? <laughs> My god, she jumped into that so fast. Hell yeah. Alright, well, I'm not going to deal with that other puzzle right now. Can I? Actually, I don't remember. Can I mark maps here? I can't mar mark maps in this game. Never mind. Dang, that's one thing I did like about Genshin. I could just mark the maps. Hello? Can I just... There we go. Oh, I don't like this. How did I learn to voice act? Um, a lot of self-study, and then when I realized I really enjoyed it, um, I started taking lessons from professionals, and then that turned into... Workshops, which turned into more lessons, which turned into more workshops. Um, and uh, yeah, here we are today. Is Camden an NPC in this quest? Yeah, I'm like, I thought it was, I thought it was Griffin. Oops, at first, but. <laughs> Damn, that's depressing. Talk. It's time for me to make an appearance. Clocky? In dream oh, I'm what not reading all that. Why, please. Oh, dear. <laughs> I guess. Don't worry, miss. Oh, oh great. On, Better use that hamster ball night speed. Oh, that's so funny, Andrew. <laughs> I preached it at PC and it was Bretta. That's adorable. I love that. That's great. Damn, you're telling me Hanu didn't have this much text? I just really picked the yapper, huh? Sigh. I hate how Numby disappears. Numby, my love. Oh no, my puppies! My puppies are crying. You you can let them in. They can come in. Is that another music? Oh, another track! So many tracks. Hi, buddy. Hello. Hi, sweet dumbass. Hello. 
Hello, sweet baby one brain cell. Is tonight the night that I finish 2.2? Probably not. Probably not. Drag the screen to grounding. Huh? Wait, huh? Drag the screen to click back to view to huh? Hi, Rico. Wow, he made himself real comfortable right here. Wait. There we go. Wait. I needed that. Wait. Oh. Hey, Yoshi, now you're under my feet. Come on, dude. My dogs are like, I haven't seen you in like an hour. I need you back. Oh my god. Dangerous harmony and unison. 2.2 is a total of five or six hours. I heard it was like upwards of nine. Bust. And... Or maybe I'll take it off. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. Also, hello. Welcome everyone who has joined us recently. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. I, I read a lot of the text. Um, a lot of the random flavor stuff, though. I'm not gonna lie. It's not, not my favorite. Damn, that was quick. Project wrapped. Huh? Oh, there it is. Furby! Thank you, guys. Thank goodness you're okay. How did I get the ducky model? Um, if you look in my sorry, I'm rubbing my eyeball. Uh, and the model's freaking out. Um, if you look in my credit section, I got it from a very talented artist on Etsy. Um, they have other stuff. They got like a raccoon, they have like a little VTuber guy. They have some pretty cute stuff. How we ended up back over here, but oh wait. Um, oh, I see, I see. Hell yeah! Oh my gosh, Numbi stop animation is so 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 cute. Like, they're straight up not having a good time. They're like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm so excited, and then they just like, you know. <laughs> Eat pavement. <laughs> Have I seen the fan made Numbi in uh, Topaz Cursor? Oh, hell yeah, I did. It looks so good. I just, I wish I were into custom cursors. Um, maybe in like, I don't know, 2009. Um, but <laughs> I, I would just get so distracted. Tbh. Honk. Okay. It's okay. What is my phone on? We're on 12%. We'll see how long this lasts. It it's doing a pretty good job, actually. Hey, hey, thanks for the prime sub! Thank you, thank you! Honestly, like, the voice match between Chevy and Alice is just, it's so impressive. It's so good. Numbi! Oh, I was heading in that way anyway, bud.
Damn, they're really just running us through all of this. We've gathered all the missing parts. Let's hurry back. We Please don't tell me there's a shortcut. Bro, wow, these are a lot of pieces. This is like a real puzzle. Holy shit. Yoshi, what is that groan for, buddy? Bro. Okay, so that's these two go together. I'm gonna like. Oh no, not me having to do a real puzzle. There we go. Probably goes right there. Right. There we go. Oh my god, I have to scroll? There are so many pieces. There we go. I love that Blanky's emote. It's like me walking around my house. Thank you! If there's one thing I do have, it's spatial awareness. Um, my memory might be horseshit, but I... Uh, spatial awareness is one thing that... I, I can say I am decent at. <laughs> and I remember what I did um, earlier this afternoon. It, it's going to take me a minute. Um, can I figure out a puzzle or directions? Yes. <laughs> yeah, dude, the puzzles are usually like, here's three pieces. Oh my goodness, where could they go? And now it's like, hey, here's a whole goddamn puzzle. Oh, okay, fine. Don't threaten me with a good time. There we go. Oh, all right, let's keep going. I also love puzzles. I just have not done a puzzle IRL in a very long time. We're back. As long as you have these, you'll be able to find closure. Tick tock. Whoa! It's working! You. Oh, God. These, these do give me a headache, though, I will say. Okay. All right. Back this way. Just front or back, huh? Can I help you, Yoshi? What are we doing, buddy? Hmm. Don't, don't tick tock, the clock is running me. Shut up. Hmm. There we go. Oh, What's going on in here? Your inner self is a mess! That's a mood. <laughs> I'm not qualified to be the real clocky. Just give up, clocky. No! This is unacceptable! You have to face your fears. Oh damn, we got like mad clocky. Success! Oh. Hmm. There we go. But you will go to therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Boop. Bust? Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Harmony and unison. Liquidation. Or 
Maybe I'll take it off. Oh. Knowledge, the measure of truth. And what a bob. Pays off. Hell yeah, it does. Congratulations to both of you. Oh, you've overcome all obstacles and proven yourselves. But uh, unfortunately, there is only one who can be Pelicone's festive superstar. In the final stage, you will face the defending champion. If you fail, you will lose the opportunity to become the festive superstar. Welcome to also, the to answer y'all's question from like an hour ago, Alice did not S5 Robin. Season, sponsored by Soul Glad Enterprises, Superstar Showdown. Hell yeah, y'all can spam the rave emote when Robin sings. I'm here for it. <laughs> It's a bop. All right, we've got arena one, arena two. They're a or di the difference between these guys. Numby jamming emo. I definitely want more Numby emotes. Oh, okay, we'll take this one. Oh, we got Argenti! <laughs> LOL. I think I just saw someone. Someone extraordinary. Someone extraordinary! <laughs> oh boy. Hello! Oh, red hair! Okay, that'll do it. Ah. Uh, to use you... my, my, uh, my adventure. Oh, what is it called? My, my imagination now. Ugh. It'd be like that. They'll probably fix it in a future patch. I don't I don't think like voiceover is like a priority when they're fixing like little bugs between like updates. Um I mean, especially with how like huge these patches are after Boot Hill's released. Probably, maybe? Honestly, I have no idea. Eyes are super pretty. Looked at that. Do the voice actors still get paid if it's bugged? Yeah, we get paid per session. So as long as we show up in the booth. Oh, we can't auto. Dangerous thoughts. Dangerous thoughts. Harmony She's so and cute. Hedge your bets. Spend freely. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Oh. The flesh wound. <laughs> Not the flesh wound comment. <laughs> That's so funny. What the, the market is unpredictable. Right. I could have skipped this fight. Oh well. Here we are. Nothing we can do about it now. Wow, Numbi, god damn, dude. Watch your head. Easy, Numbi. The way half of my team is currently D6. <laughs> the symbol of Peel the duel commence. A song bring us victory. That's a lot of damage. Let's bop! Oh! We get to keep the boss music. Okay. That's fancy. I like that. The market is unpredictable. Right. Investing in victory means playing the long game. 
She's like, I respect the boss music. Put forth all your might. SAS knowledge, the measure of truth and falsehood. Oh yeah, dude, the music in this whole game is just so, so, so good. The ultimate is eternal is it saying sincerity, is that what it said? We don't have much time. May fate allow us to meet again, Knight of Beauty. Knight of Beauty is so beautiful. In case, let's make our way to the end. Where is the Numbi VTuber avatar? Does not talent. exist. <laughs> I hope we make it in time. Um, I'm not gonna commission one or anything. It's one of those like if someone makes one, um, I I I would pay to use it. Um, but I do I trust me. I I do love Topaz and Numbi. I just don't want to it to be the only thing tied to my identity, that's all. We got some stuff cooking, y'all, just trust me. He, he is an annoying boss, I will say. Oh, that's cute. You know, I hate when they do this. They just give you a whole lineup of stuff. Like, okay, fine. Go ahead and make me nervous. It's like when you roll into a, a, a new section of the game and then it's like, oh, autosave. Oh, okay. Oh, hi, Rico. Hi, baby. Oh, you little orange slice. Little orange slice king. Alright, in we go. Congratulations to the both of you on becoming the festive superstars of this year's Charmony Festival. Before entering the Grand Theater, I, on behalf of the organizers, Extend my sincere congratulations to you. Wishing you joy under their radiance. Hmm. Where are my stellar jades? That's a goddamn mood. <laughs> Your endeavors are worthy of extra recognition. And I've taken steps to ensure that. However... This reward is not a material one, but rather the opportunity for an open and honest communication between us. As previously promised, my sister, Mr. Yang, and I have met with the Dream Master. We delved into the truth about Penacony and its Stellaron, and have come to a consensus. Both I and the Oak family cannot acquiesce to your request. Whoop. <laughs> Just as expected. We acknowledge the perspective of you, Nameless. Panacone does require change, but not as you propose. The planet of festivities cannot and will Are not Are we a part of a Church of Sunday? I'm gonna go hard no chaos, on that. I don't fuck with this guy. or anarchy. Through your journey of overcoming obstacles, you must have glimpsed the essence of that era. The vulnerable, ruthlessly eliminated. Hey, thanks for the tier one sub. Welcome, welcome. Common folk living precarious lives, eking out a dreary existence. Ultimately, only heroes like yourselves manage to achieve success. But I would dare ask. If you did not possess the special status of having a Stellaron, and you were but an anonymous and frail member among the masses, which Penacony would you prefer? A dystopia for the survival of the fittest, or a sweet dream paradise for all? Huh. I don't know, why are you asking me? <laughs> yeah, right? Mr. 
Mr. Sunday, even if the members of the Oak family can't fully agree on what to do about the Stellaron, now's not exactly the time to be holding an extensive discourse about Peniconi's past and future, is it? The Stellaron issue concerns the life and death of everyone on Peniconi. If anyone has a better suggestion, the crew is more than willing <laughs> yeah, to listen. Yeah, if Sunday were playable instead of, like, also, you know, Robin just, like, singing and doing physical damage, like, Sunday would just be yapping and doing physical damage. <laughs> this way, we'll at least know what Welt and Miss Robin are dealing with, and the reason... Robin, uh, buffs her team way. by singing, um, Sunday debuffs oh, the other team by putting them to sleep. <laughs> that is precisely my intention. With all present, let's begin by discussing the details of that meeting. Let's talk about our tribulations and choices. And yeah, <laughs> Sunday is the definition of sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Sunday's action. words be like, <laughs> yeah, bet. <laughs> you mean to say that for the longest time there have been scoundrels who would use this the charmity festival? That I have bequeathed to the masses as a tool to realize their ambition. Indeed, Dream Master. Once the Charmony Festival begins, the Stellaron's powers, along with the song, will be broadcast across the entire planet of Peniconi. And then everyone in their dreams will be unable to awaken. Hmm. This is indeed surprising to me. The dreamscape is maintained by the collective effort of the five families. If someone were to use the Charmony Festival to recklessly disseminate the power of the Stellaron, this individual must hold a position of great authority. Do you have any suspects? I'd like to ask. Did you really not know of the Stellaron's existence? Hmm. I would have never thought that this nameless would point the spear at me. Quite astonishing indeed. If I have offended, the Astral Express extends its sincere apologies. But the current circumstances are dire, and leave no room for meticulous inquiry. We're doing this out of concern for the Dreamscape's safety. So, if you could, please alleviate our concerns. Dream Master, it's just to prove that the Charmony Festival has nothing to do with the Stellaron. If we're being overly cautious, I will return to the stage to offer tribute in song. Just per the arrangement. <sighs> Sunday, Robin. I've watched you two grow up and know your dispositions like the back of my hand. Both of you, right now, can surely be lauded as their most devout advocates. I already know your resolve. The magnitude of this matter is enormous, and cannot be taken lightly. Since Mr. Yang has asked with such earnestness, I will personally respond in kind. If there is a need, the entire Oak family will be mobilized to heed your call. Someday, might I ask you to beseech them? To cast their light unto me, and question me in their stead, so that no lies may Can't be Can't stop staring at the duck. Good. I will do as you command. This model is very beautiful. Robin, could I entrust you, you to be present as a witness? Look at this. Look at this to baby. To document the truth, <laughs> and to proclaim my model. innocence, model. so that all slander may be utterly the model. There it is, there it is, model. I will do as you command. May thy will be carried out on earth, just as it is in the Thank you for those redeems, I'm taking care of that! Oh, triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, 
so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Let us begin. There is nothing else to prepare. God, the like wiggly frame thing. Understood. Question. Have you devoted your life to your god? Excuse me. Never worshipping other gods? <sighs> Excuse me. Naturally. Bro, what is he doing? Thank you, thank you. Do thank you, you guys. love your god as you do yourself? Always heeding their admonishments. Naturally. Have you strayed from the path expected by your god, betraying their name? Never. Have you ever been inordinate with your asks of your god, coveting more than the foundation of the creation itself? Never. Then, a final question. Do you swear to fulfill all vows, past, present, and future? With the Eon as my witness, if I do not deliver on my words, or if I renege Bro, this is so vows, intense. May I be cursed in accordance with divine law. They have seen your faith, and have endorsed your faith. With this, it can be evidenced... Just a moment. What is it, Mr. Yang? I have another question I hope to have answered. To my understanding, the family's harmony and prosperity have never relied on so-called divine laws. The god you both mentioned, are they truly Shipe? Mr. Mr. Yang should know that those belonging to the family toil together as if they were kings. Embracing solidarity and unity under their light. All duplicity is laid bare before the harmony. Such a delicate and complex symphony. Which other god could perfectly harmonize this if not for the great one? She may. Perfectly harmonize it. Therein lies the problem. It isn't an outsider lurking in the shadows who changed the harmony, but a dissonance that has surreptitiously emerged from within this very symphony itself. In the distant past, there existed an eon. With one flick of the wrist, they crafted the laws of the cosmos. Their followers formed the Beyond the Sky Choir, spreading solemn and reverent hymns throughout the universe. Later, they fell. The route traversed by this eon clashed with the harmony, ultimately being absorbed and fused into it. The chorus that once reverberated across worlds fell silent, and when it echoed anew, it was transformed into the hymn of harmony. Though an eon may perish, paths with no masters still linger. In the all-forgiving harmony, Echoes of bygone dissonance may subtly arise. Mr. Yang. Being overly astute can be a detriment. Especially when you find yourself alone. Oh no, not the threat! Hmm. So this is how it is. For the sake of our grand cause, Sunday, please afford this to you an opportunity to rest. What? Bro. Sorry, Robin. It's just you. I did not wish for you to know this. Bro! It's a pity that things have turned out this way. Bro! So, 
This is the true reason I can't sing. The shadow that envelops Penacuni is actually... We were never children of the Harmony. Our ideal paradise could not have been crafted by Shipe. True bliss can only be guaranteed by the one who transcends the many. Within the foundation of law, humanity establishes civilization, and through harmony, we obtain order. Bruh. Ah. To think that there remnants of the order on Penacony. What have you done with Mr. Yang and Miss Robin? Don't worry. I just gave them some time alone to ponder their fates. You should know that these actions make you an enemy of the Astral Express. Yeah, get fucked, Sunday! Should we need to stand against the Nameless? What do you mean, should we? It would only be myself and the Oak family involved. But we haven't reached that point yet, have we? Your efforts I for the hate when he holds his fucking hand behind his back. And have been widely observed. Ah. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. However, I won't hold it against you. On the contrary. I'm here to make my intentions clear. If it is the Order that drove you to imprison Welt and Robin, and you're using them to coerce our compliance, then there'll be no point in entertaining any type of discussion. You're mistaken, Miss Himiko. They are in very safe hands, and just as the family has always proclaimed, no one can be harmed in the dreamscape, least of all in the beautiful new world belonging to the Order. Panacone and the entire universe have witnessed far too much innocent bloodshed. Yeah, dude, that is some like the scary Himiko energy. It's against the weak, and the victors push the vanquished to the brink of life. Natural selection. The world abides by this principle, establishing the well being of humanity atop the corpses of the downtrodden. Only we, or rather, I possess the power to put an end to this farce. So you've decided to resurrect a dead Eon? Uh. No one's ever done such a thing. If Miss Himiko is interested, let's draw back the veil and speak candidly. This I've motherfucker wants to be a god. People can understand one another through peaceful means. That's right, Rico. I'm willing to divulge the unembellished truth as to the intentions of the Order's path striders, so that you will make better judgment for the Astral Express, for Panacone, and for this stretch of the universe. Words can hardly do justice to the beauty of that ideal. So, come with me, everyone. Let us retrace our steps, and see once again where this road leads. But, okay. Welcome. This isn't any location in Penacone's dreamscape. It's my inner world. The reason the scenery before you remains unchanged is because your consciousness has drawn on similar concepts to fill in the gaps. Huh? Did you do the same to Welt? It's a tuning process. Stronger in effect and more draining on the mind. The gray-haired guest has experienced it before, so she should understand what it entails. Tuning allows you to intuitively grasp my feelings, which also means that I cannot hide anything from you. Now, everyone, please look at the huge screen. The road we once took begins here. Which one asshole? There are two of them. From this point on, you will witness the numerous decisions I've faced. I've selected a portion of these to share with you. I believe after going through similar predicaments, 
you'll be able to better understand my thoughts. Let's begin. The first decision. A story about a baby bird. This story happened when Robin and I were very young. We were victims of the Stellaron disaster, and the family's Mr. Gopher Wood, who would later become the Dream Master of Penacony, saw that we siblings had no one to turn to and took us in. Later on, Robin and I lived the time with Nary. Don't mind me, I'm gonna multitask and uh, switch day, over to my webcam dinner, from my phone because my phone's about to my die. Younger sister with, and uh, I were the lounging duck. about in Mr. The Gopher duck. Wood's yard. Duck will be back. We spotted a fledgling Charmony dove all on its own. That baby bird was tiny. It didn't even have all of its feathers, and it couldn't sing. When we found it, it was already on its last breath, having fallen into a shrub, probably abandoned by its parents. We decided to build a nest for it right there and then. However, thinking back, that winter was unusually cold, with fierce winds at night in the yard, not to mention the many poisonous bugs and wild beasts in the vicinity. It was clear that if we left the fledgling in the yard, okay, it stood no chance of surviving until spring. So, I suggested we take it inside, place it on the shelf by the window, and asked the adults to fashion a cage for it. We decided that when it regained its strength enough to spread its wings, we would release it back into the wild. The tragic part, something that we'd never considered, was that this bird's fate had already been determined long before this moment. Its destiny was determined by our momentary whim. Now, I pass the power of choice to you all. Faced with this situation, what choice would you make? Bruh. Stick to the original plan, and build a nest with soft net where the Charmony Dove fell. Or, build a cage mm -hmm. for it, and feed it. Ooh. Giving it the utmost care from within the warmth of a home. Ooh. I eagerly await your answer. Ooh, that's... yeah... Uh... Uh... <laughs> I mean... In context... I don't... I don't like this question. I think... Nursing it back to health would be the better option, but we also see what happened here, so... I can't decipher his intentions right now, but... Based solely on that question, I would probably choose to build that dove a cage. Even if I was going to release it back into the sky, it'd have to be strong enough to fly first. If I left it where I found it, I fear it'd never get the chance to fly ever again. Dang. Not the morality test. Okay, hold on a second. I gotta, I gotta fix the duck one more time. Keeps facing all the way down. Seem like the top of the duck's head, now the mouth isn't moving. <laughs> okay. That should do it. You know what I realized? It's not picking up my mouth because it's like out of frame. Okay. That should do it. Perfect. Beautiful. Gorgeous. All right. Duck is back. It looks like he really has no intention of imprisoning us. If it's just a quiz, I suppose it's fine to humor him. Back to the question. I would personally choose to build the little Charmony Dove a cage. No special reason. I do think that a fledgling should have the right to fly into the sky. But if it can't even live to that point, then there's nothing to talk about to begin with. Yeah, Himako, that's, that's what I'm sitting at. Uh, that guy just casually 
he throws this kind of question at us? What exactly is his deal? But fine, I'll answer, I guess. If it were me, I guess I'd choose to build a cage for the little Charmony Dove. After all, leaving it there, it's bound to get hurt by wild animals or something. And that'd just be too sad. Yeah, good to know we're all on the same page, but we all know what that answer means, which is unfortunate. So... I'm happy to see that you made a choice similar to ours. If your mind is made up, let me reveal the outcome of this choice. We passionately nursed it back to health, preparing only the best food for it every day. We even preened its feathers. Later, on the day that Robin left Penacony, we opened the cage door and let it fly back into the sky. I watched it for a long while by the window, probably about three or so days. In those three long days, the little Charmony Dove tried again and again to spread its wings to fly into the sky, but fell to the ground, only to keep trying. Finally, on the hundred and thirty-seventh attempt, Jesus, it succeeded. But its attempt did not go perfectly. After flying unsteadily for a while, it fell to the ground, unable to grasp the direction of the air currents. The fall shattered its wings. Oh. It writhed helplessly in my embrace. But it was all for naught. Finally succumbing to a painful demise. Uh. And in that instant, our tender care, our given love and hopes, they all became the inevitable push that sent it to its death. Uh. I deeply regret the choices we made. Next, let us head to the second okay. decision. This time, it's the story of a dream chaser. This story happened when I was appointed as Bronze Melodia, a position exclusive to the Oak family, charged with listening to the problems and vexations of dreamscape residents, and providing them with the relevant guidance. It was during that period that I had the opportunity to hear voices from all corners of the dreamscape. Joy. Sorrow. Arrogance. Regret. The complex tapestry of human nature that formed the world. And I was fortunate to catch a glimpse of it. He was a dream chaser. And an illegal stowaway. Just like the rest of them, he came to Panacone in search of a better life. Except that, to most people, the price he paid... I suppose you could say it was everything. He told me, I sold everything I could at home. The house, the land, even his two children. He said he could not afford to raise them, and that at least they could eat if they lived as slaves. Ooh. He had a plan in place. He would buy back his children once he had made his fortune and enjoy Panacone's beautiful dream with them. Alas, his plan to smuggle himself was somewhat clumsy and he was sniffed out by those pig-headed hounds. After hearing the Dream Chaser's story, I immediately appealed to the Bloodhound family to cease their pursuit. That way, at least he could live peacefully. But I was still too naive to the ways of the world. I did not anticipate that what I thought was a kind gesture would later lead to dire consequences. I'll tell you the outcome soon. For now, I'd like you all to make a choice. Boy! Will you do as I did, and try to convince the Bloodhound family to stop their pursuit? 
so that the Dream Chaser may live peacefully and realize his wishes? Or will you remain silent, leaving him to languish while the hounds are hot on his heels until his inevitable judgment oh. arrives? I look forward to everyone's decisions. Who knows? Perhaps they might even alter the outcome of this tragedy. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah, secret third option. Um, we attack Sunday. <laughs> like when you play Baldur's Gate, there's always an attack option. This question. Surely it has some connection to the baby bird story. And this connection is precisely the breakthrough Sunday aims to use to persuade us. I'd probably choose to ask the Bloodhounds to cease their pursuit. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning on that. I don't know. Part of me, though, is usually just like, I'm just gonna let fate take its course. But in a situation like this... A dream chaser story. If I acted out of kindness, I would probably ask the Bloodhounds to stop their pursuit and lend them a hand. But... What cruel repercussion would this choice result in? I think... Sunday must have been deeply impressed by the limitations of the strong defending the weak through this incident. Mm. It seems illegal stowaways are really quite common on Penacony. But that guy in the story... I don't think he deserves any sympathy at all. He sold his kids to chase a dream. Even if he intended yeah, to come back for them. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of looking it's still at. It's insanely irresponsible. With that thought, there's only one choice. Let the bloodhound send him back home. This person deserves to be punished. Yeah, I mean, his intentions were good. But at the end of the day, I mean, it is its one of those things. It's like thinking back to like, uh, what is it? The Great Depression when people were like, like selling their kids so they can meet ends meet. And then also hoping that whoever bought their kids was going to give them a better life than they were in that, in that moment. Like, that's just like objectively a really, really, really tough fucking situation. Like, that is not fun at all. I don't know. Fuck that guy. I mean, I think the part that really bugs me is, like, the fact that it was a, like, transaction. If he, like, surrendered his kids to someone or, like, an organization that would better, like, care for them and not literally leaving it up to chance whether or not his kids have, like, a life that's worth living... And that's one thing. Yeah, he did say he was going to buy them back, but also, like, what are the odds that he's going to be able to buy them back, right? Like, you just, like, roll up and be like, hey, yo, let me buy them back, you know? Is uh, No, like, I don't know. I don't know, man. This is tough. I mean, this just kind of screams giving my kids a better life. It's 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 literally the immigrant story. But it's also the transactional aspect for me really bugs me because it's, it's not even giving my kids a better life. It's I want a better life and I can rationalize this decision by saying the kids are better off here than with me. Like, yeah, would the kids even want to be brought back knowing that their father surrendered them for money to do his own thing, right? Woof. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to go with, you know, at the end of the day, making a decision and me intervening would be me intervening. And theoretically, it's not guaranteed that the bloodhounds are going to catch him anyway. So I would just sit here and, you know, I would rather not intervene in this kind of a situation. I'm going to let the bloodhounds do their thing. Yippee! It seems you, like me, are pondering whether a different choice could have led oh. to a better outcome. Well, sadly, his fate would only be more tragic. 
Well, we don't give a shit about the guy. Say he never gets caught. He would only die from delirium. There you go. The methods with which illegal stowaways enter dreams are unorthodox. Not flawless like the hotels. Yeah, it Living sounds like either way it was going to end up like this. Pipe dream. Should he be apprehended? Could the hounds afford to turn a blind eye? The answer is a definitive. Also, no. also, 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 they also. They bear the resulting consequences, and thus wouldn't dare extend a helping hand. Also, we can totally turn the tables and say, well, if he's apprehended by the bloodhounds and he goes to prison, is that not a better fate than whatever he was doing on the streets anyway? Quite literally the same logic that he put his children in. Except, like, his children's outcome is going to be objectively worse because not only has he, like, traumatized them forever, but... Yeah. As to your choice... I once again offer my heartfelt apologies. Next comes the third and final decision. And the story this time is my own. Either way, the kids are fucked, which is super this unfortunate. This story happened the day I was appointed the Oak family head. At that time, Mr. Gopherwood was the current dream master. And as for his wish, we had a private conversation. What surprised me was that the Dream Master had only come to deliver a letter to me. He let me read its contents, and it was a letter from my sister. The letter contained the usual pleasantries, anecdotes from her travels, nothing out of the ordinary. Just as I started wondering how this letter related to our discussion, the Dream Master began to speak. Do you know who wrote this letter? My sister, of course. But why would you personally visit me to hand me a letter from my sister containing mere trivialities? To help you grasp the full scope of this issue. Do you know where Robin is at this moment? From what the letter indicates, she must be in Caspelina 8, correct? She's touring there right now. Correct. Has she mentioned anything about a stray bullet? A stray bullet? What? A war has broken out on that planet. It is because of this very reason that Robin chose this destination. To spread the word of the Harmony. And to save the lives of that planet. She personally made for the front lines. She hoped to ease the people's suffering with song. And was willing to brave mortal danger to deliver the IPC's medical supplies. Unfortunately... Stray bullets show no such compassion. Is she all right? If the operation was successful, she should probably be recovering in the field hospital. By the eon above, the bullet struck her neck directly, yet possibly as a reward for her consistent deeds of harmony it didn't hit any vital arteries. Once you've attended to your outstanding tasks, it'd be advisable to write her back as soon as possible. Those damned savages! I'll pack my bags right away. My gratitude for bringing this to my attention, Mr. Gopherwood. Now you understand why she always wears such elaborate neck ornaments. Don't you? How could this happen? Miss Robin? Yippee! It's all in the past, so please don't worry. I share this in the meager hope that you will understand the harmonies, limitations, and predicament. As grandiose as the strong defending the weak sounds, many times, it is nothing more than wishful thinking. 
Likewise, I've prepared one last question, one last choice. But rest assured, this choice will not have any grave consequences. Because this is merely a figment of imagination, a nightmare that has haunted me through countless nights. If you ever had the opportunity to make a choice like I did, would you still support Robin's journey on the path of harmony? <gasps> Not deciding Robin's destiny! I often feel like I've dreamt of similar scenes on certain nights. In the dream, I see blurry faces. I don't know who they are, but I sympathize with all of them. Fighting for survival against some unfathomable force. Their confusion and fear are lucid to me. But I also remember they chose never to give up. Just like Miss Robin. If Mr. Sunday's question leaves you puzzled, you should find the answer from your own experiences. With each trailblaze, dangers and tribulations will surely follow. But would you ever back away? Would you stop March and Don Hung from reaching their next destination? I believe you have an answer of your own in your heart. Miss Robin's courage is admirable. And here I was thinking she was just another superstar celebrity. But the fact that she's also Mr. Sunday's younger sister? No, I doubt he'd wish harm on his own flesh and blood, no matter how grand the ambition. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I can't believe that happened to Miss Robin. The strong defending the weak is a great mantra, but if I had to pay such a price, I... I don't know what I'd do. Oh, she just didn't even give me an answer. Stop, Robin. Support Robin. I mean... I'm a supportive bitch. I'm gonna I'm gonna support her. I mean <laughs> I see. I am now aware of everyone's stances. Raising these questions merely serves to illustrate one point. The plight of Penaconi cannot be salvaged by the harmony. The true foundation for a sweet dream paradise can only be established through the order where the strong govern the weak. I know the suffering of being tormented, the turmoil of losing your way, how sorrow and even despair set in when matters don't work out. All of this causes me unending pain. Because this is not what happiness is at all. Yeah, like he, he wants to control his sister. To live a happy life. And this life isn't some noble propriety that the upper crust preaches, but in definitive terms, a way of survival that belongs to everyone. So what is your definition of living a happy life? Huh. Good question. Human consciousness is fundamentally an illusion, a cage known as self-worth. People lured in by this illusion make mistakes, yet still ask that external influences bear the burden. When one mistake after the next permeates the masses, they become impossible to trace. Thus, the amassing of these individual cages culminate to form a prison. A place dictated only by the rule of survival of the fittest. Nature is always accompanied by predation. Oh, she is gonna come by? Hell yeah. Its antithesis 
is known as order. That is what I want to do. Unite people's happiness under the banner of order. They won't need to make bitter choices any longer, nor face the weaknesses of humanity. They can cast aside their primal instincts to build a haven for mankind. <laughs> Simply describing thoughts is far too abstract. So allow me to provide a simple America! Hello, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Chia. Hey, everyone. Thanks for coming by. I hope y'all had a good stream. What were you guys? Uh, are you guys still working on story stuff? Hello, hello everyone. Hello, story stuff. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm a duck today. I don't want to put um, my camera on. <laughs> yeah, there's a story behind the duck. <laughs> uh, anyway, hi everyone! Welcome, welcome, welcome in! Uh, my name is Sam, I'm the voice of Topaz and Honkai Star Rail, and, uh, Perfumer in Ark Knights, Lean in Iodin Chronicle, Hundred Heroes, uh, and a bunch of other stuff that I can literally never remember. So the link was posted in the chat. Thank you, Mods, appreciate that. <laughs> I have the memory of a goldfish and the attention span of my dogs. So um, uh, these long, long story beats are hilarious for me. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank you guys for coming by. Um, if you want to stick around, um, we're, I don't know how much longer we're gonna go in the story because I don't even know where we are. I mean, I know where we are in the story, but I don't know like, what the mile marker is for it. So we'll just, uh, we're just gonna keep going until I feel like not playing anymore. So yeah, if you're sticking around, thank you, welcome. Um, but if you're gonna head out, thank you and have a wonderful evening. Oh my God, we're only halfway. Bruh. Oh my God. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> it's long. It's good. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> My husband's looking at me like, Sam, both you and I know this shit ain't fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's good. It's good so far. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. But yeah, we're just gonna keep on trekking. During these hard-earned rest days, people are given the chance to extricate themselves from the stresses of everyday life allowing a certain tranquility to return to their souls. And it is only on these days that people do not have to adhere to the law where the strong prey on the weak. They can live out their lives happily during these brief intermissions. It's just a pity that two or three days are still too fleeting compared to the span of a lifetime. From where I stand, Society's ideal system should be seven rest days. Following Sunday, there should ensue a second, a third, and indeed an infinite procession of Sundays. The fuck? This should be the face of the new world. Idyllic, eternal. I'm telling you, man, I fucking called it. His name is a religious reference. Thus, every person can return to their base selves in this utopia. Oh, I don't like how this is scrolling on Some its own. Some days in reverence at the stars, pouring their whole beings into calculating Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't like this guy. And the I don't trust this guy. world of Pagana. Meanwhile, some seek refuge in quiet corners, holding one another, unencumbered by the chains of unwelcome obligations. There would be no need to bear the hardships of reality. Only in this way can humanity face the inevitable end with the purest of spirit. Bruh. Living a life of dignity. This is what it is to live in bliss. Miss Firefly, you who are stricken with entropy loss syndrome, you of all would surely understand this. <sighs> Like a flawless theory. <sighs> nah, dude. Nah, dude. Nah, dude. Nah. What is the? Pr 
price to attain all this. That's what I'm saying. The cost is minute. Merely a personal and eternal ha! sacrifice. Oh, the sacrifice! It's, it's, it's a little, just, um, is to be maintained forever. For everyone, someone must remain trapped in solitary wakening until the end of the cosmos. Bruh. Wakening. Which means that this so-called paradise is still a dream. Stepping into this paradise means forsaking reality, correct? It's it like, teehee, you know, the easy way to eternal happiness. <laughs> Just blood, die. <laughs> sorrow, weakness. If the physical is the root you know, of spiritual You know, you can't suffering. suffer if you're dead. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. But in this supposed bliss, people won't have defeated their demons. The chance to overcome their tribulations would be forever lost to them. In other words, it is an escape. That's another way of understanding it. But there is no shame in escape. On the contrary, the seeds of escape exist in everyone's hearts. Don't you agree, Miss Firefly? And as to why we sleep, it is because we are afraid to awaken from our dreams. But this is not in conflict with the grand plan. Only in acknowledging this can we truly understand the frailty of human nature. And from there, show compassion and protection. I... I admit that you are a born leader. Your perspective on humanity brims with pessimism. Yet you express compassion for all. Even when your heart pities them. But unlike you, I live for the self. From my perspective, individuals making choices for themselves is their birthright. Get his ass. The want to escape may be innate in the weak. But whether they are weak or not, it is not up to another to decide. Perhaps in your mind, you also view me as weak? <laughs> because I don't think so. Since Miss Firefly has said her piece, the Astral Express will also naturally give you our answer. We'll leave it to you. Just as Mr. McHale instructed before. Tell him our choice. <gasps> Tell him our choice. Get fucked, Sunday. What is this place? Does this place ring any bells, Misha? I... I don't know, but I feel a sense of deja vu. What is this place? It's the realm within a dream bubble. This was left to the Astral Express by a nameless, but weirdly, when we entered... Hello, it, welcome it in everyone who's empty. just now joining us! Dr. Edward from the Dreamscape sales store told me that dreams are formed from memories, and a dream bubble can't take shape if its core is empty. So I thought you might be able to help us in unraveling this mystery, Misha. As a hotel doorman, you know Penacony best among us. Hmm. I... I don't know much about dream bubbles. But if you want to figure out what this mansion is, I'll do my best. I'm counting on you then. Uh, Himeko, I still don't get it. Why were you so sure that Misha had a connection with this dream bubble? I wasn't sure. It was just a hunch. But since Misha feels familiar with this place, my hunch might be correct. Yeah, chat, please, no foreshadowing, no spoilers. Uh, if if y'all get if y'all get weird, then my mods are gonna throw on emote only. Uh, but yeah. What kind of duck is my model? Uh, credits are in my credit section in my about. Um, it's just a, just a duck. I, I, I'm not good at duck species.
Up. Oh, all right. Never mind. Ha ha ha. There you go. Exactly. This is where you and Firefly encountered death, which we now know as dormancy. Considering dormancy, its connection yeah, the to big sleep. Leaf, it's not surprising it appeared here. The question now is, who brought you here? Based on the clues we have so far, it's unlikely to be that masked fool. So identifying them is crucial to us. We're trying to get close to the truth once more. Let's give Phoenicia some time, as I don't mean if you will unveil the secret of this dream people. She really said, get to work, what? boy. But there are doors all over the place. Which one should we choose? Oh, is audio getting scuffy? Do you have any idea, Misha? Alright, alright, alright. Alright, let me, let me, let me do my little audio refresh thing. Hold on. Okay, better, better, worse, same. Be good. Hmm. I guess. Cool. Maybe this way. I don't know why it does that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but okay. Let's give it a try. Oh shit! He's fucking bolting. Oh my hey, god, finally, you? a character you're following Weird. that goes full sprint. This place is quite different from the hotel. But I just, I feel like I've been here before, and... Let's realize, his eyeball here for is a, a keyhole. If I remember correctly, there should be a fireplace down that hallway. Clocky and I used to sit by the fire. Listening to the crackling of firewood and and the room on the other side was the toy room I Loved spreading out all the toys from the box on the floor and making up stories for each of them Hold on This doesn't make sense Didn't I grow up in Dreamflux Reef? So What is this place? This could be a case of amnesia. But don't worry, Misha. It's common for everyone to forget certain aspects of the past. Those memories haven't vanished. They're just lying in the depths of your mind. We can surely get them back. Since this place seems familiar to you, why don't we explore a few more rooms and see if you can recall anything more? Yeah, then... Let's check out the rooms I just mentioned. All right. Mikhail, that's the name. Now we all know him as the watchmaker. So, who is he talking to? Do you know anything about it, Misha? I'm sorry. I don't know much about the Watchmaker, but... Mikhail... Anything special about that name? Mikhail... is... is Grandpa's name. Grandpa? Uh, you uh... mean... you're the Watchmaker's grandson? But we haven't heard anything about the Watchmaker having descendants. And the name Mikhail is not rare. Perhaps it's merely a coincidence. Could you tell us more about your grandpa, Mikhail? Yeah, sure. He was a seafarer who fearlessly ventured into mysterious seas and storms. He was always on the sea and had lots of friends who accompanied him on his travels. He didn't want me to call him Grandpa because that would make him sound old. He believed he was still young. The name Mikhail was given to him by his parents, Mihaly and Elise, both renowned seafarers. Every time he came back, he'd share his Mihaly, walk with Mikhail, me and tell me about his question mark Misha's father's name probably starts with a meh. I want to become a great adventurer, just like him. 
It appears that the seafarer has nothing to do with the watchmaker. So, perhaps it's just a coincidence? So, where is your grandpa now? He went off on a new journey. And it's been quite a while since I last saw him. So, where has Clocky gone? Did he leave to protect Dream? Don't like that. Always Misha with the fucking wobbly words, man. TikTok. TikTok. Nope. TikTok. I don't like that. TikTok. Creepy ass room. I heard some noises from the room. Origami bird? That's a friend of mine. You and Origami Bird are friends? Yeah. It's a member of the Compass Crew. Uh, just like Clocky and Miss Mirror. And there's more than just one Origami Bird. They are a big family with lots of brothers and sisters who look the same. They follow Miss Mirror's orders and handle all sorts of jobs on the ship. They're the best sailors. Sailors? Can origami birds be sailors? Could you tell us more about the compass, Misha? The compass is a ship bound Thank for, you the, for new the stretch. World. Clocky and his model looks like I'm asleep. I promise I'm not asleep. I'm just looking down. I like angle my head a certain way. Its eyes close. Clocky will use a compass and guide the ship in the right direction. That's a great story, but in the Panacone cartoon. Clocky and his partners have always lived in Dreamville and never ventured out, right? Huh? Oh, that does seem to be the case. Weird. I... I clearly remember... Clocky arrived in the New World in the end. <laughs> Perhaps Clocky has a hidden past. I think... I hear the sound of water. I like this shit. You once mentioned there's a magnificent fountain up ahead. Whee. Look, there it is. Something else here. Bears down. Okay, we don't have to go there yet. Oh, look at all the monsteras! Aww. Except they're all anatomically incorrect. A monstera is a vining plant, and the leaves come off of the stem of the leaf prior to them. They don't all come out like a little bushel from the ground like this one does. They're pretty, though. The water resembles a precious jewel embedded in the dreams of all seafarers. Every time I gaze at the shimmering lights beneath the waves, it feels as though I'm back in this place, standing by your side. Have you recalled anything, Misha? Yeah. I saw these sentences in Grandpa's logbook. He used to say that despite the perils of the sea, whenever he stood on the deck in the afternoon, overlooking the sparkling waves, he would think of this fountain in front of his house. He often said that those moments felt like returning to his family's side. And the difficulties at sea didn't seem quite as challenging. Huh. You know, I quite understand such sentiments. Huh. <laughs> I'm not an elder. I was just being a bit sentimental. Perhaps every adventurer far from home carries a fountain within their soul. Even though the other side of the sea remains shrouded in the unknown, the fountain in front of his house serves as a compass, leading him back to his cherished ones. Yeah, while Grandpa was at home, we would stand by the fountain and place the compass, a toy boat that I made, into the pool. Back then, I would ask him when I could go on adventures like him, and he would always laugh 
say I was still I'm gonna too speed young. read and just kind of click through the dialogue. Uh, it seems this Mikhail is truly a yeah. Based on Misha's recollections, we've just been sitting in cutscenes for a minute. A but this raises more questions. According to Misha, he was could this be some sort of? I'm sorry. I don't know, but perhaps I'll. I'll. No, nah, right. I wish to share your burden. We're going to the opposite side, right? No. We should turn left here. Uh huh? Something feels Hold different about here. this place. Nothing's over here, okay. This is it. I remember this corridor. Up ahead is Grandpa's study. It was in that room. Whoa. I saw him the last time. The atmosphere in this room feels total Misha! You finally come! Clocky, you're here! Huh. Yeah. This is the room where are those books on the bookshelf log books left behind by that seafarer? Yeah. Whenever he came back, he placed a logbook on the bookshelf. He described our world as a fountain to ensure that everyone had land to settle on. On that day, he called me to his study, telling me that he was embarking on another Ooh. I asked him if I could go with him, but he said that my advent... What sound? He told me about a vast ocean in the sky. An ocean of stars. Oh? He spoke of a train that transports children with a desire to venture far away. Traversing the sea of stars without ever stopping. He said that he knew the crew on the train. And that he had asked them to take me along. He said the journey I had always dreamed of would start there. Oh. A train? Uh, could it be? It's... It's the Astral Express. I... I remember now. Grandpa's friends are a group of nameless who came to this world to resolve a disaster caused by... Oh, uh, yeah, there it is. Then, he gave his pocket watch to me. It was his cherished treasure. Appearing in every one of his adventure tales. He explained that difficult times were ahead, but assured me that the watch would guide me. Hello, welcome he in said, everyone! It's Lorefest! As I kept moving forward, I'd eventually reach my desired destination. And then, it was as if I heard the distant sound of a train whistle echoing throughout the room. Exactly, Misha! And then we followed that whistle, didn't we? Yeah. I think I can still find the way we took back then. This is the dream jigsaw, right? So we're supposed to find the exit. Do you remember? You said you obtained... Oh. Hey, the shape seems to match. Looks like we're just one step... that I don't like it the music stopped this is it this is my room of clocks while I spent my time waiting for grandpa to return from his voyage Walter gave me this workshop and it became my secret base here, I learned how to repair clockwork and gears out of my fondness of precision mechanics. In my dreams, I was the captain of the compass, 
embarking on adventures with my companions, Clocky and Miss Mirror, in search of the new world. I... I was born and raised here. So, this building in the Dream Bubble is your childhood home? Yes, but not exactly. To be more precise, this Dream Bubble itself is my home. Oh, that's sad as shit. <laughs> Looks like you've remembered everything now. Wait, wait! Why does it feel like everyone else knows something I don't? Marge, do you remember when she mentioned a clocky that only she could see? Yeah, the little guy here, right? But we all saw him in Dreamflux Reef, right? And Mr. Yang even greeted him. Looks like everyone on the Astral Express has a childlike spirit. The answer lies in the Astral Express. Her experience shows that neither Firefly nor Acheron can see this clocky. And when we were in Dreamflux Reef, you may have noticed that for some reason, nobody outside of the crew had ever talked with Clocky. A mimetic life that can only be seen by a select few. It's just like a hidden message left by someone for the nameless. But Misha can see Clocky too, right? They even grew up together. But Misha hasn't started the way of the trailblaze yet. That's the key to the mystery, March. Now take a moment to recall. Have you ever seen anyone outside of the crew interact with Misha? Ah, <laughs> there it is. That's the answer, March 7th. This dream bubble is the place where I was born. And I... I'm a dweller in this dream. Just like a memory zone meme. I should have stayed here and waited for you. But when reality and memories merged, I unconsciously pushed open that door and left the bubble with Clocky. So it's not that the Watchmaker's dream bubble is empty, but rather, the stuff inside ran away? And the whistle you heard, was the sound of the Express arriving at Pentacony? That's one way to see it, but I believe there's a long... How about we start with your name? <laughs> should we call you Misha, or...? Thank you all for helping me rediscover my true self. Now. Please allow me to reintroduce myself. I was born on Lushaka, in the Presmere system. Adopted by seafarers Mikhail and Char. They gave me a treasure. A name that carried their hopes. Mikhail Char Legwork. Or simply, Misha. There it is. If you prefer, you can call me by a more familiar name. The Watchmaker. So, you're the Watchmaker himself? Unfortunately, that legendary figure is no more. I am only a reflection of his life. As for the child who has been with you, he's the innocent protagonist of Misha's childhood dream. Friend of Clocky, a young apprentice, and a future mechanic on the Express. And this also marks the beginning of his journey, devoted to the Trailblaze. At the, the end, end of, of the, the journey, journey, I left, left this, this little flame, which I so, so cherished, cherished, in, in my, my deepest, deepest dreams. dreams. Hoping, hoping to pass, to pass it, on it on to the, the nameless names. of future, future generations. generations. However, he somehow left the dream bubble and forgot all about his task. I apologize for all the confusion this caused. 
<laughs> because he was born with a desire to trailblaze, wasn't he? I don't think Misha has forgotten his role as a guide. He remembered it, and that's why he mistakenly appeared as a hotel doorman in her dream from the very beginning. The one who brought our unconscious friend here must have been Misha. If that's the case, we encountered the Watchmaker's legacy from the beginning, didn't we? Well, I have a sarcastic friend who says I always take big detours and end up back where I started. Perhaps that's what every nameless has to go through. But in the end, you found me. I'm sure you're all wondering what my legacy is. I believe my hound has mentioned the Stellaron and my wealth. If I may apologize, the Stellaron part is real. As for my wealth, however, it's nothing more than a baseless rumor. I left my homeland as a child and embarked on the journey of Trailblaze. I traveled to various planets until finally reaching Esdana, where my friends and I built the original Penacony and fought for its future ever since. I've been moving forward all my life, doing what I could to overcome the obstacles in my path. But ultimately, my journey reached its end and I left behind no possessions worth entrusting. So, if you ask what's left within this worn-out train engine that can be called a legacy, I suppose it's the things that are still burning in the engine's furnace. Now that you're well aware of the current situation of Penacony, I certainly hope that you'll help me get this world back on track. But I'll leave that decision to you. Like the way they're phasing out Misha's voice. The path of Trailblaze is never paved by others. All I have for you is a story and two gifts. I want to give you my pocket watch. It has accompanied me throughout my long journey, guiding that naive child forward. And has been blessed. That explains why he has like a little so ticket on his um, on his scarf. Up to this day. And my hat too. The one who navigated for me placed it on my head, and planted a fanciful thought in my mind. The trailblazing expedition will never end. Now, it's time for you to make your choice. Once you've made up your mind, open that door and enter the long dream of an old man. I'll be waiting for you at the end of this corridor of time. All right, everyone. Let's make a decision. Although I don't think anyone will have any objections. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I zoned out for like a split second. Is there a correct answer here? Uh, give me one numby for choice one, give me two numby for choice two. <laughs> Three? Oh lord. Y'all! Does the choice not matter? Okay, I'll take it that the choice doesn't matter. Okay. Of course! We've come this far. Surely there's no other option than moving forward. In that case, it's unanimous. Then let's proceed together to the end of this dream and tell Mikhail our decision. All right, I think this is a pretty good stopping point. Um, mods, we can turn off emote only. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I uh, I, I already knew who Hi. Misha was. 
unfortunately, in our auditions, uh, they tell us all the big character story beats things. It helps us uh, get to know the character, so unfortunately. Same thing happened with Firefly and Sam, so uh, yeah. <laughs> Literally, I remember auditioning and going, damn! Oh, I would have loved to experience this in game. <gasps> uh, and after the next cutscene, yeah, it happens. I mean, plenty of games do that, like where they just give you, you know, major story stuff because it helps you approach a character a bit more effectively, which is legitimate. I understand. But Hi. yeah, keep going for a bit. OK, so don't stop yet. How much longer is this next uh, little little bit? Is it gonna make me like go through a whole dungeon or something? Oh, it's just three years of cutscene. All right, cool. Five more minutes. All right, cool. <laughs> Mikhail, where are you going? Someone has to step up and save Lushaka. So why can't it be me, Misha? Please don't go. And if you must, please take me with you. Don't leave me alone. Even without me, you know how to proceed forward, brave Captain Misha. The compass is waiting for you. Haven't you always wanted to be a better adventurer than me? Now go, board that train and start your journey. Where are you going, Mikhail? I, I'm going to clean the floor in the parlor car. I promised the conductor. Wait, first tell me, did you fix this watch? Um, yeah. I know what it looked like before. Its chain was broken, the back case torn, and the marks on the dial all worn out. How did you manage to fix it? Well, uh, it's hard to explain, but I knew it could be fixed. It's the hands, Mr. Amundsen. Its hands were intact and pointing in the right direction, so I knew there would be a way to fix the rest. <laughs> I see. You'll work with me from now on. Haven't you always wanted to tinker with this train? You're its mechanic now. As for the conductor, I'll do the talking. But, but I only know how to fix watches. Don't worry. You've got what it takes. I'll teach you what you need to know. Where are you going, legwork? It's time to head to our next stop. <sighs> I... I'm staying in Astana with Rosalina and Tiernan. I see. This place reminds you of home. The people of Astana have only achieved a tiny victory and still have a long way to go towards true freedom. Hanunu needs us. Don't worry, not all journeys lead to the stars. Even if I leave the Express, our path of Trailblaze will continue. <sighs> yeah, I knew you wouldn't stay on the Express forever. Leave in peace, my friend. And, uh, take this with you. This is Mr. Amundsen's hat. But why? When he departed, he said he would leave it to his best student. Well, I suppose the time has come. Farewell, legwork. Take care of Tiernan and Rosalina. And don't forget to write to us. Where are you going, watchmaker? Don't worry, Micah. Just going on a little trip. Someone has to be at the forefront of the interstellar frontier, and I'm the only former nameless in Panacone. So why can't it be me? Because you're all we have. 
Have you forgotten about Tiernan? The cosmos is way more dangerous now. What will happen to Penacony if we lose you too? But what will happen to Penacony if we don't find a way out? Ah, Tiernan. How could I ever forget him? Oh, that's Nick? I've spent Hell yeah. sleepless nights asking myself why I didn't go with him back then. We nameless won't stop. Don't worry, Micah. It's just a matter of getting back to my old profession. Just wait for me to come back. But if, and it's a big if. If I don't come back in one piece, then you'll become the next watchmaker. Where are you going, old man? Oh, you're here. Answer my question. What are you up to? Relax, Gallagher. I just came up with a great idea. Pain. Wanna hear it? Oh, come on! Aren't all your ideas just ways to get yourself killed? I may be blunt here, but you're the last remaining hero in Penacony. If you die too, the, the secret of the Stellaron will go to the grave with you. Yes, I'm afraid there's no way out in Penacony, so I'll have to consider alternatives beyond Esdana. We'll organize a festival using the Watchmaker's legacy as a facade, and send invitations to the entire cosmos to gather people here. So... A desperate struggle against the family? Desperate? <laughs> Don't we have you here, my friend? This task is challenging. But what hasn't been challenging for us along the way? Well, whatever you do. Charmony Festival. Is that named that? That's named after him, yeah? Make sure to send an invitation to the Astral Express. Misha! Huh? Where are you going? Oh, it's you, Clocky. Take me. To dream Flux Reef. Last night, I had a long dream about the day we met. I want to write down that dream. Write it down? Why? Oh, so I won't forget it. Do you remember? How you got your name, Clocky? Of course! You told me that when you were a kid, you lived in a room full of clocks. Those wall clocks and pocket watches grew up with you and were your best friends. Yes, but what I didn't mention was there's a funny misunderstanding behind it. I was a kid, and there was always a special pocket watch in my memories. It was with my grandpa, guiding him on his sea voyages, and leading the way in his every adventure story. I wanted to have a pocket watch like that too, and that's when you appeared in my dream. Yeah. Every night, we boarded the compass and set sail together. But you know what? It wasn't until the day my grandpa gave it to me that I realized it wasn't a pocket watch at all. It was a compass. Damn. So, your name should have been Percy. <laughs> and the watchmaker. Oh, that's so good. That's so is funny. It's just a nameless. <sighs> oh. 
That's my dog. We arrived at Dream Flux Brief. So, where to next? Ah, you know, Chloe, Damn. I don't think I'll be going anywhere else. All right. Well, I think that'll wrap it up mm. for now. Um, let me see who's still online to raid. <sighs> Ooh, let's go raid Ann Yatko! Hold on, let me go put this window up. Let me snag her. Yoink this. Ten minutes more? Dang! Wait a second! Y'all! Y'all said after that cutscene! Ah, uh, just a little more. Okay, all right, all right, hold on, hold on. Let me relaunch Star Rail. God damn it. Y'all said that was just one more cutscene! That was one more cutscene! All right, fine, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna get it back up. <sighs> Five more minutes, Sam. Five more minutes. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. No, I'm not sleeping. This bitch don't sleep. <laughs> fine. All right, let me get this shit back up. SMH. Look at the quest description. Oh boy. You know, I never look at the quest descriptions. I should probably start doing that. Okay. Take a rest in the moonlight. Yippee! Oh shit. Yippee! Oh, thank you, Hayberry, for the five gift subs. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, whoa. Oh, shit. There's a whole ass. Okay. Dang. Ew. That's deep. Oh, he's walking real fucking slow. No, I hate these moments. Sorry. Oh, he's gonna go see himself up there. Damn it. Ah! Oh, that's funny as fuck. Rest under the moonlight. I've traveled far enough. Oh no! It's time for a break. Oh. So, we'll set out again. When you're rested? Sure. When you're rested. <laughs> no. I'll stay here. And then this is where it ends. No. Oh. This is where it ends? What do you mean, Misha? You told me that the trailblazing expedition would never end. Yeah, that's what I said. So now, it's up to you to decide your next destination. My next destination? What's that supposed gonna, to be? I'm gonna go I've been following on the you! Misha? <laughs> you're acting weird today. <laughs> if, if you're feeling down, we can just... Do what we usually do <laughs> with the clockwork. <laughs> no, I, I'm not feeling down. As for clockwork, yeah, it resolves all problems in this dream. So, do you know what clockwork actually is? Hmm. I'm 
not quite sure. Well, everyone gets lost at times. They may hesitate and doubt which way to go. That happens in this dreamscape and beyond. But don't worry. Everyone goes through moments of uncertainty and hesitation. Eventually, they gather the courage to make bold decisions. Whether it's calming, joyful, angry, or, or sad. All they need is a little nudge to take that step toward where they truly belong. I'm leaving that little nudge with you, and I hope you'll share it with others. Such is the essence of clockwork, the will of the trailblaze. <laughs> Yippee! The clock spin around non-stop, Yippee. indicating confusion, frustration, and weakness. No! People still need to move. Oh, forward. what the fuck? Just like, like your hands. Ah! Oh, God, I'm afraid. This is where my dream <gasps> ends. <gasps> From now on, Yippee. it is your path to walk. <laughs> Trailblazer. Oh, God. Means taking paths your predecessors forswore and venturing even further. <sighs> The Pentaconian Mikhail's dreams does not belong to order. Oh, man. Oh. Bro! I can't believe that evil oh, cast a glance at the Pentaconian so hard, at a time man. like this. Is it because of the resonance from the legacy of the Trailblaze? Perhaps the bond between you is so strong that it even presses uh, an eon. Well, there might be another possibility. Thank you, Perhaps Boobs, for the community sub. On behalf of the fallen eons, you. who will oh. hold the future of God Pentacony? Damn. Oh, that hurt me. That shit On behalf hurt. of the Dream Master of Pentacony. <sighs> And the 107,336 members of the Oak family, I'm extending a formal invitation to Yippee. all of you. I'm cordially inviting you all to the Panacone Grand Theater to participate in the upcoming Charmony Festival. And, of course, you won't be in the audience, but on center stage. Since the future of the Stellaron Panacone, and even the entire cosmos is at stake. Let's draw a conclusion there, in all fairness. If you truly believe in Akavili's path, then show me their courage and determination. Goddamn. Hell yeah. Nice. Ooh. Nope, I don't I don't wanna I don't I don't wanna do that. Alright. There you go. Nope. Cool. Uh <sighs> hold on, let's go ahead and just throw a fucking light cone on her. Uh what's a good light cone for her? a good one memories of the past okay which one is that one i don't remember oh here it is okay that's perfect because no one's using it anyway relics i'm gonna go ahead and just stick those on there real quick all right perfect all right so now we can go raid Anne if she's still on <laughs> let me go pull her stream up let me see hell yeah she's still there Awesome! Let me go throw my window up for you all so you can see it when we get in there. Oh, my mouth is, like, not working. Okay! Alright, thanks everyone for tuning in! Uh, 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 I don't really have a raid message. Just just drop the, the Topaz raid emote in, uh, in Anne's chat when you roll up in there. Alright, bye! Bye-bye! We have, a a couple, a couple more seconds together, actually. Five!
four, three, two, one. Bye.